Welcome back. This is part 10 of the top-down tank battle tutorial for Godot 3.0. Uh, this time we're going to talk about bullets some more. We have our enemy and our player tank shooting, but they're only shooting dumb bullets. And so this time we're going to add some heat-seeking missiles so that we can get some variety in the type of weapons that the enemies can run around with. All right, let's get started. Here's our bullet script, which is being inherited by both the player and the enemy bullets. And we're going to use a lot of this same code for our heat seeking missile. So we're going to just add some code to this one so that it can inherit from the same place too. Because really the only difference between the plane bullet and the heat seeking bullet is that one can seek a target. And so if a bullet doesn't have a target, it should behave you know, like a regular bullet that travels in a straight line. So we're going to add one more variable here, and this is a steer force. The so steer force is going to be how agile this missile is, how, how quickly it can turn. And then we're also going to have an acceleration vector that we need to track, and we're going to have a target variable. And normally this will be null but we will set it for missiles to the player or whatever uh, whatever thing you're shooting at. So then when we spawn the bullet, we're going to optionally pass it a target. So we'll set this to null by default. So that way, if there is a target, then we'll set the value to, of the target to whatever that was that was passed in. Now in our process function, if Again, we have no seeking behavior, then our velocity is going to be constant, and we're just going to travel in a straight line. But if we have a target, we need to find the direction towards that target and turn towards it at whatever our turn speed is, so that we can try and head towards it. So that's going to be an acceleration. So our acceleration, our acceleration vector is going to be set to whatever our seek function returns, which we're going to write in a minute. And that's going to give us an acceleration towards the target. So our velocity now gets altered by the acceleration times delta. We will we need to clamp our velocity to the speed because our when we, you know, when we stop to turn, we're going to be slowing down to turn and head back in the direction towards the, towards the target. If we didn't do this, then we would keep accelerating towards the target and get faster and faster. So we want this speed in a heat seeking missile. The speed is going to become the maximum speed that it can travel in a straight line. And then we need to also change our rotation since we've now turned a point in a different direction. We want our, our, uh, rotation to match the velocity's angle, so we're always pointing in the direction we're moving. And then we now have our seek function to make. And if you go and do some reading up on various steering behaviors, you'll know that seek is one of the simpler ones. It works by taking, by finding your desired direction. So this is the, the vector that we want to be moving in, which is going to be the vector towards the target. So that's the target position minus the bullet's position normalized times speed, right? So we want to move towards the target. I spelled desired wrong there. We want to move towards the target at our maximum speed. But our steer force now is going to be the amount towards that direction that we can turn. So we take the, the desired, the direction we want to go, minus the velocity, which is the direction we are going, normalize that, and multiply it by the steer force. And that's going to pull us towards the desired direction by whatever our steer, fo steer force is, and we return that. So now we have our directional steering and we just need to now assign this bullet to an enemy and have it start shooting. So now to get this working I've created a new inherited scene from bullet that I've called missile and I'm using this image for it and it's just going to inherit from the bullet.gd script. Okay. 
Now if we go over to our map, what I'm going to do is take this enemy right here and I'm going to put the missile here in its bullet property and that'll make it fire it. But now we need to make a couple changes to the tank script so that it can pass that target along if it needs to. And actually, we can pass the target to every bullet because if a bullet has its um, if a bullet has its steer force set to zero, it's going to be a plain bullet anyway. So we go into our so let's see, let's go into our enemy tank script. So our enemy tank script has a target, that's why it knows to shoot. So we're going to pass that when we call shoot. So that means that in our main base tank script, our shoot function now needs to accept a target. And we'll set that to null by default. And we'll pass that along with the signal when we emit it. And then that just means we need to go to our map script. And then when we get the shoot signal, we're also going to be passed a target. And we pass that along to the bullet. And then the bullet will have a target, which we have already set here, which we're going to set here in the, or we have set here in the start. So now our target can be set. So we'll go over to our, back to our main here. And here's the bullet, oh, actually the missile. Let's go and set our properties. I've set the speed to 400 the damage to 15 and the steer force to 25 for this missile. So this guy should now be shooting missiles at us. Oops, let's go to our map and run that. I'm going to drive down to where he is. I'm going to drive past him so we can see these things coming at us. There we go. See how they're curving towards us? And now obviously the next step is going to be we can adjust that steer force. We can adjust the lifetime of the bullets, how, how long they're going to chase you. But they are curving in. And if we go over to the other tank, we'll be able to see that one is still going to be firing the plane bullets, which have a steer force of zero. And they're still going in a straight line. OK. And so you can see a little variation. I've lowered the speed, and I'm going to increase the steer force to 50, so you can see kind of a different bullet behavior, or missile behavior, I should say. So we will go over here, and you're going to see the bullets will be slower, but they're going to have much more maneuverability, so they're going to attract me around corners pretty well. So you can get a lot of different bullet behaviors just by adjusting those properties here of speed and steer force, and make these missiles behave however you want. Now, another thing I want to do on these missiles is add a bit of flare to them. I want to have I want them to have a trail, you know, smoke trail coming out behind them because these are these aren't just dumb bullets, they're missiles. So they're going to have some kind of smoke trail behind them. So we're going to do that with a particles 2D node. So I've added the particles 2D and I'm going to just quickly walk through what the settings were for it. So I've set the amount to 30, the lifetime to 0.4. I've turned local coordinates off because we want it to, when the missile moves, I want these to stream out behind it. Should probably turn that on there. So yeah, so when the missile moves, I want these to stream out behind it. Uh, we have added a texture. So I found an animated texture on open game art of an explo a smoky explosion and it's 24 frames of animation. So we're going to throw that into the texture and set the H frames to 24 so that the frames will be chopped up properly. Um, I've moved the position accidentally, put that back to zero. And we also want to put show behind parent. Right? I want it to look like the smoke is coming out from inside the back of the missile, not on top of it. So I put it back behind there like that. And then in the process material, we've turned gravity to zero, initial velocity to zero. I've added a scale curve where we take it from small, around 0 0.2, up to 0 0.5. So it's going to grow a bit. 
so as it turns into smoke it gets bigger and then we've also set here this is where you set the animation I've just set the animation speed to 1 and let's take a look at what that looks like There we go. So now our, our missiles have a nice smoke trail behind them. Now one other thing I wanted to add to shooting while we're working on shooting is a way to fire multiple shots, like a spread of bullets. Um, and we're going to set that in the tank script. So we're going to go to the tank script and we're going to add two new export variables. Gun shots. So how, how, many, how many bullets are going to shoot? and also a float which I'm going to constrain to that called gun spread and I'm going to default that to 0 0.2 so this is this is how many shots to fire and this is the angle between shots so how spread out are those shots and so now we need to update our shoot function our shoot function is now going to take a number and a spread. Now normally that spread that number will be one and if it's one we're doing what we're doing we should be doing what we're doing right now. But if num is greater than one then we want to do a loop and we want to loop and shoot that many bullets and the only difference between them is going to be the angle between them. So, so we can call this the I'm just going to use A for alpha for an angle. The angle we want is negative spread plus I times 2 times spread divided by num minus 1. And so where did that complicated formula come from? Well, this is because we want them to be centered. So if I have a, a if I'm shooting three bullets, I want the middle one to go straight and then one to the left and one to the right. So our angle needs to start at a negative value. And then so the first one would be negative whatever angle and then this is going to be zero over here because i is zero. And then the second one is going to be one times and this is going to be adding an additional angle each time. So now we have an angle we need to emit, actually we can just copy this one, so we're going to emit the signal, but the signal we emit is going to, the difference is going to be the direction is the direction rotated by our alpha. So we give it an additional, a small additional rotation. Okay. And then if we didn't, so then we just will put an else here for this one. And we emit the regular signal if the number of bullets is normal. And then we don't have to change anything else because we're emitting the signal. It's just we're just going to be emitting three bullets to the main instead of one. So let's go back over to our map and I'm going to change the enemy that has the missiles assigned. And I'm going to set his shots to let's try three. And now let's run over here and see him fire three shots. Oh, and we forgot to add it. So now when we call shoot, we need to pass num and spread. So that's in enemy tank shoot. So here in the enemy tank, we need to pass gun shots and then spread. Okay, let's give it a shot. We should have three, a volley of three missiles every shot. There we go. And that's going to kill me real fast. Cool. So now we have this functionality. We can customize our enemy tanks and our player for that matter to have uh, multi shots. We can have a spray of regular bullets. We can have a spray of heat seeking missiles. All right, so I hope this was 
helpful for you and I look forward to getting back into this. Uh, I have a bunch of things that we're going to add in upcoming videos. If you have any suggestions or comments, please add them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.